And I'm now joined by Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert, hosts of The Orange Pill. How are you two doing? We're super happy. Looks like a good year for commodities. It does. It does. Yeah, I know your theme for this year. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's relentless optimism. We are relentlessly optimistic because we are in the Bitcoin community and it's hard not to be relentlessly optimistic. As Paul Tudor Jones, legendary hedge fund investor, says about the Bitcoin community, it is a bet on human ingenuity. What could what could compromise that? And is there a situation that you see that could that could, uh, I guess, the state get its fingers involved in Bitcoin and we see more capital controls, et cetera? Uh, no, I don't think uh, that's uh, really going to be the case because the, as was talked about, Bitcoin separates state from money and the state has no ability to get into Bitcoin or disrupt Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is unconfiscatable, it's uncensorable, and it's going to um, really disintermediate the state. I, I think we're going to see now the beginning of the dissolution of this nation state as a model. We're going to see one of the major central banks go under in 2021. I think the central bank model is going to also uh, go the way of the uh, horse and buggy. And um, so they don't really have any way to attack Bitcoin. There, There's a couple of ways, theoretically, that Bitcoin could be challenged. One would be to try to control the network in some way. But no state or group of states have the computational ability at this point to attack Bitcoin that's running at 150 um, quintillion calculations per second. There's simply no system in, in, in the world that's anywhere near this. And um, there's another factor here, which is, I think, plays into this idea that gold bugs have where Bitcoin, where gold is physical and I can hold it and Bitcoin is not. And so, therefore, I, I can't really accept it. Well, sure. One thing to keep in mind is with that, with Bitcoin, there is, you could say, a physical element to it because the encrypted shield that keeps the Bitcoin community um, uh, separated from the state is uh, impenetrable. The, it, you're essentially, when you're in the Bitcoin network, when we're transacting a Bitcoin and we don't need permission, we don't need a bank, mm -hmm. we don't need an intermediary, we can transact. Any two individuals on planet Earth can transact without any interruption, no state, no bank. And uh, there's no ability by any outside force to stop that because the encrypted shield that protects the network is impenetrable for the, what I just mentioned. So in that, in, to that degree, it's, it's physical in that sense, if, if you can think of it in terms of it has a physical attribute. It's just as a brick wall would be, a, you could not run through a brick wall. You know, there's the physical yeah, uh, object you. in your way. You cannot penetrate or pierce the encrypted shield that keeps the Bitcoin network free from the state. So right. that's like a, a wall. So you can't break it. So I think gold bugs, if they have that, if they think about it in those terms, they can migrate over from gold and start to see Bitcoin and understand the Bitcoin use case and the Bitcoin value proposition. And you get more of the gold crowd into uh, Bitcoin. I agree. And thanks for that. You know, we're talking about a finite uh, number of coins and there's a small population of people that, I mean, like yourself, that were, you were a decade ago talking about why this had utility and why people should pay attention and, and started building a, an allocation. My next door neighbor isn't going to turn his head until the price is 100,000, 150,000. And then he's purchasing the same asset at a vastly inflated price. We'll never have anywhere close to the quantity. And so would we, would, could we end up with a very small population that controls 90% of the value and that essentially becomes the state in some way? Well, I think the state, you see, there's a game theory layer baked into the Bitcoin protocol. And we want the states to try to get involved. And we want the sovereign wealth funds. And we want the hedge funds. And we want the Michael Saylors. And we want the private corporations. And we want the balance sheets. And we want Elon Musk. And we want Jeff Bezos. Because uh, the more people come into Bitcoin, the hash rate goes up, the security goes up, and the price goes up. So uh, we want everybody in the world, every government, every sovereign wealth fund, every money manager, and every household to buy Bitcoin uh, and to enjoy the price appreciation going forward. Um, you do have now that transitionary period that will come from Bitcoin as a store of value, where it is now, to becoming a medium of exchange. 
And that's happening quite rapidly. And I think it, it'll start to push aside other payment rails in the next couple of years to unit of account. So we are heading to a world that things are priced in Bitcoin. And so any amount of Bitcoin will be needed if you want to participate in the global economy. I right. would follow up. I would follow up with that. And I would say that a few things. First of all, regarding your previous question to Max, is that when you separate a state from money. The previous moment, revolutionary moment like that was when we separated church from state. And that was something that also broke thousands of years of human behavior. There were these divine people that God himself appointed to lead over us, rule over us. And something snapped that we attacked these people, beheaded them in France, and just like that is a huge break that you can never go back. France will never have a king again because they've already beheaded it because they've already said there is no divine individual. We're all, we all have human rights. We all have, you know, have the same natural law applied to us. Well, the same thing happens when we broke this connection between money and state. Now, I think originally, like when we first started using gold as money, there was no centralizing state around money. And I think it slowly happened because humans didn't understand what they had with gold for thousands of years. The, the age of Medici was the, uh, an amazing period of time when you know, the state had to come to the Medicis. They had to come to the people who, with gold and beg them to finance their wars. Mm -hmm. And then after, soon after the age of Medici, the Renaissance, then the state started with the Bank of Amsterdam to start grabbing people's gold, convincing them. They didn't steal it at first. They just convinced them to give it to them and they would give them these bonds or, de or credit instead. But that was a mistake. And now we have Bitcoin. So we, we can move on from that. Now, in terms of power, there, there is no central authority in Bitcoin. Even the whales, who even those people with lots of Bitcoin. We proved that in 2017 with the fork wars. The, 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 the giants, the whales, the corporations, the powerful, you would think, powerful individuals in Bitcoin tried to fork it, hard fork Bitcoin to, uh, you know, something that the users, the little minnows of Bitcoin did not want. And the minnows won because they were more than, you know, just even by having like a fraction of a Bitcoin versus the guys with tens of thousands of Bitcoin. There was nothing that you, they could do because of the amount of users all around the world that decided they didn't want what the whales wanted. Right. Plus, as you move into an era of Bitcoin as unit of account, those, those holding large amounts of Bitcoin will start to circulate those Bitcoin because everything will be priced in Bitcoin. So if I want to buy an 85-foot Hatteras yacht, I'm going to be paying Bitcoin. That means I'm disgorging some of my Bitcoin. And yeah. the Hatteras yacht maker is now taking Bitcoin. So that's the transition of money. It goes from uh, you know, store of value, or first it's a collectible, then a store of value, then a medium of exchange, then unit of account. And when we get to unit of account, you're going to see that circulation. And that's that we're already transitioning from store of value to medium of exchange. That's what's happening now. And uh, during the very early years, it was a collectible. You had the cypherpunks were storing it on their computers as a hobby, as one might be a stamp collector. Yeah. And it became yeah. a store of value. And people like Michael Saylor and Paul Tudor Jones get involved. Yeah. Then it becomes a medium of exchange with second layer on the transaction side and payment trail on, built on top of the Bitcoin protocol. And then it'll be go to unit of account. And we're in a Bitcoin-only world. Everything will be priced in Bitcoin.